love, doubt, DNA collided, and Mr. Hoover brought the defendant to court to prove he fathered their baby girl. And the stakes couldn't be higher, through the roof, for the baby daddy. Will the truth reveal itself, or will it remain shrouded in mystery? Well, we are about to get to the bottom of that. You have petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove to your fiancé that you are the father of her eight-month-old daughter, Nova Lee. You need today's DNA results to keep your family together, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Armour, you stand here in court hoping and praying that Mr. Hoover is Nova Lee's biological father, but after a one-night stand with your ex... Once upon a time in a convenience store far, far away, the star-crossed lovers, Mr. Hoover and Miss Armour, met and fell in love. Well, it started with cheesy pickup lines and a pink bracelet. That's all it took for the sparks to fly. However, this fairy tale soon turned into a nightmare as the dreaded ex lurking in the shadows came forth. Uh, oh! We met when I was working at a convenience store. He'd always come in and we'd talk. It wasn't really anything other than idle chatter. And one day he came in and said, hey, come here and he pulled out a pink bracelet and he said, I made this for you. And it was the first time we ever really had a real conversation and I didn't believe him because I'm like, oh, that's a cheesy pickup line. You just <laughs> went and bought this. That was going all rainbows and sunshine, but the mommy destroyed it all for a one night stand with the ex. You, what she didn't know was that her infidelity came up with an even bigger cost, dum dum dum. A baby, the baby daddy was thrilled, but mommy knew best, she messed up big time. A month or so, maybe two, and I actually found out when I was with Lee, I was scared and I told him, I think I'm pregnant. So we went and got a test and went to his house. And when it came up positive, we both just started to cry because I knew there might have been two possibilities. But when I went to the doctor. Even after the confession, the baby daddy was still hopeful about the conception window. Hmm, delusional or plain old hopeless romantic. Huh, figure that one out. Moving on, as they embarked on this journey riddled with uncertainty, baby daddy was right alongside the baby mama. On October 6th, still for her birthday, and then a week. Were you intimate, the both of you, in October? Absolutely, yes, your honor. You yes, were. Your honor. So, that's still, even if the conception window is where you believe it may be a little later, Mr. Hoover is still a possibility. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so let's go to the birth. Let's go to Nova Lee's birth. Who was there? Lee was, along with. Continuing with the mess, Ms. Armour did take the infamous ex into the loop, but he didn't appear too thrilled over the news. And so after much needed talk with Mr. Hoover, baby mama decided to cut the ex out of her life for good, and he couldn't be happier about it. Gross dude indeed. That's all he said. But what did you say? Well, after I had her, me and Lee had discussed it and I was mad at my ex at the time. I did not like his lifestyle. I didn't want him in her life if she was his or not. And Lee actually did not agree with that, but we decided he will be her father. And I messaged my ex and said, she's not yours. Guess who came back? Ding, 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 the ex. These guys just couldn't get rid of him, could they? Like a bad fungus, he was back. But the manner in which he was back was a bit vague. If I do say so myself. Well, my ex didn't really come back into the picture until our babysitter got into a fight with Lee and then decided to message my ex and ask for baby pictures. Wait a minute, what? We were, we we were, were gonna talking. Do it. We were gonna do it regardless. Yes. And even at the beginning, like she said, Said, I didn't want her yes, to text. Yes, she said you thought it was a bad idea. I was trying to counsel her because I knew that her hormones were out of whack and that she wasn't thinking properly. What? Would you look at that? Seemed like not just the ex, but the babysitter was also after these guys. What the heck was going on with their household man? Even though you believe you're the father, Mr. Hoover, the babysitter decided she was gonna tell the ex. She thought we wouldn't make it without her. She was trying to sink the shit. So she sent a, t a text to the ex and said, the baby looks like you, can you send me some baby pictures? What happened? No, he got a message from our babysitter asking for baby pictures of him. And he said, well, why? She said, well, I just wanna compare. And he said, are you kidding me? They didn't get a DNA test. Well, the ex couldn't grace the court with his delightful presence, awfully convenient. But no worries, because his mother was more than happy to give a statement and proving why his son could not be the baby daddy. And everyone believed that, except for the baby mama. Wow. Doctor that he most likely would never have children. The medicine that, that he takes for his illnesses 
decreases his sperm count. This would be his miracle child. This matter needs to be settled soon as possible. My son wants to add his name, child's birth certificate, and change her last name if he is the father. This is the statement from his mother, Lynn. The baby daddy was suffering a great deal, and his desperation was quite visible. All his answers were sealed in that envelope. Let's see what the judge's verdict held for this family. Mr. Hoover, you are not the father. I'm so sorry. We needed to know. I'm very sorry, now. Mr. Hoover. I'm not sorry. Mrs. Jasmine's life was all hunky-dory, and then out of nowhere, her whole world got shifted when her mother told her secret she had been keeping. Since then, the plaintiff had been on one heck of a journey for answers, but Mr. Little didn't appear to back down that easily. Ms. Degree, you say your whole world changed when you were just nine years old, and your mother revealed to you that your dad was not your biological father. She then told you Mr. Little was your father, yet claim he's denied have you ever sent? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Little, you say you are 100% certain you are not her father. Yes, Your Honor. Come on, man. Give the poor girl a break. I mean, who does that to an 11-year-old? So, taking matters into her own hands, Ms. Degree got down to business and made the much-needed phone call. To her display, though, the call didn't go as planned. Ouch. Wow. Tell me your recollection of that call. She called my house. My wife answered the phone. I didn't know who she was. She said she's Ms. Degree's daughter. Uh, you might be my father. I don't know who she is. I was like, I don't know if you is or you're not. We need to take a test to find out. Did you know who she was? No, I didn't know who she was. This is my first time seeing her. I ain't know nothing about it. And so you just decided just to talk about a DNA test with a child? Told you baby daddy wasn't gonna back down. And more so, the guy even brought a calendar from 24 years ago, illustrating the window of conception. Man, he came prepared. He just couldn't wait to wash his hands off the entire situation, and it showed grossly. I knew she was pregnant. That's what she told my brother, that it wasn't mine. My brother said, is this my, is this gonna be my um, nephew or niece? No, it ain't your brothers. Okay, I'm Well, familiar. if she told you that, it's then- It's funny, you don't why remember- you to, Why you trying to- 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 Why you that we messed around in August. She tell me in November. What is that, Mr. Little? A little proof right here. Let me see. Well, we messed around. Now, amidst the window of conception fiasco, the daughter ended up raising a good question. But Mr. Hoover was all the more ready to answer that as well. He paid child support, and he did not like it. And then the court got plunged into pure chaos. Bang that gavel, judge. They need some order. If you so-called believe, and if my mom exactly. said it wasn't yours, why are you searching for me so-called? Exactly. Why I'm searching for you? If I am your child. Why I'm searching for why you? The, but you should- Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. But you just said the that you believe I'm in searching, phone, though, right? The reason why I'm searching for you, because I got a little evidence right here. If they start taking stuff out my check, I'm called, I want to take a DNA test because I want to get it stopped. Okay, you don't they, search they take for her. 12 hours. Man, you you crazy? Let me see court. that evidence, sir. Dear Lord, these guys thought they weren't in court, but in their backyard or something. Now, according to that evidence, the defendant did appear for the hearing. But interestingly enough, the mother-daughter duo did not. What was up with that, hmm? And so the garnishment stopped. Sounds pretty shady, though. And they never got in contact with them, or they never showed up to take the test. So I when tried. you went to court, no one showed? No one showed. And then what happened to your case at that point? They threw it out, because they never showed up. And so the garnishment... Stopped. And well, well, the reason why they obviously stopped it, in my estimation, is because you two didn't show. Well, I was in a whole nother state. I so, but no, my point is, is they don't usually... Well, the drama didn't stop. Oh, no, it went on, people. People. Ms. Degree had all the right questions for the defendant. However, his response didn't sit too well with the judge. And we know what she will do next, don't we? School was in session. Being a grown did man. Not, did being not a reach, grown man. Didn't I reach out to you and ask you to take a, a test? I was a child and I, and I acted when like an adult old, to find you, right? When, when you got older, didn't I reach out to you and say, let's take a test to find out? That was for child support. It wasn't for child support. Let's find it out. It's for child support, but we still need to find out. So, Ms. Degree, right. though, explain to this, this gentleman, I'm being generous, sir, because yes, you're crossing the line. Now you're yes, a little bit, you're a little bit, a little bit aggressive to this. Moving on, Ms. Jasmine's brother came up to support her, but he also had a few things to share. Specifically, the manner that alleged baby daddy reacted the day his sister made that call. Wow. 
the man had no remorse. If you think about it, it's almost like, what if the test says he's not? It's a little, it's a little embarrassing, you know, to go through all that. That's somebody working that hard just to, just to make some type of connection with somebody. You know, you got her reaching out several times and then he's dismissive Childish. about it. Yes. You know, I was there. The day she called him when she was 11, I was right there. And I, I'm not, I don't recall him saying it or not, but he hung up the phone on her. The moment we've all been waiting for, the DNA results were in. It was a long time coming for Miss Jasmine's degree, and she deserved to know where she came from. Let's see whether her search came to an end or not. Mr. Little, you are her father. <laughs> Mr. Little, you really seem shocked. I really am. Don't cry, Mom. You my dad. Do you want to have something to do with me? You want to meet your brothers and sisters? I'm open to it. All right. That's good. Yeah. There were two brothers, a promiscuous partner and a beautiful baby girl who hung in the balance. Yep, a packed situation over here. Ms. Johnson stood firm in her belief, but the defendant, uh, not so much. And he had a lot to say. So hold on to your DNA swabs, folks, as we dive into this tangled web of love, lust, and all kinds of uncertainties. Ms. Johnson, today there are two men who've been tested as possible fathers of your four-month-old daughter, but you say you believe the defendant, Mr. Blackman is her biological father. That's right, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Blackman, you argue that Ms. Johnson had a sexual relationship with two other men. You fear one of those. So a Casanova father gave birth to a Casanova son, and we got Mr. Blackman. Yep, that pretty much sums him up and his personality. And boy, did he have some gross ideologies. To sum it up, he didn't like the taste of his own medicine. And somebody better check on Houston, because those guys are still living in the dark ages, man. The Look, women in my Houston, dad's a you Casanova. would want to explain that. My dad a Casanova, and he taught us two rules. One rule was nobody mess with anybody's girl. And that second rule was nobody has a girl. You understand? So I get it. it. We had so much fun back then that it might have cost me being the father of this child that's in question. So, Miss Johnson, tell me this, about your relationship with the defendant. Did you hear that and cringed out? Because I sure did. And this was just the start, too. Baby Daddy, who once proudly declared his disregard for anybody's girl, now found himself in the same boat. While questioning the baby mama's promiscuity, the poor guy failed to make sense of his actions. Like, any other woman I've been with who, you know, really loved me, they wouldn't even accept being with my brother. But she had no problem with it, so it was like a test for me to go ahead and let her but go But she's still with me, though, and you had a baby with, that we purposely yeah. did. So uh, hold that on, Miss Johnson, that we purposely no, did. wait, no. wait, wait, let me follow this story. So you're yeah. in a relationship with an older man. Yeah. So she jumped from one relationship straight to another, and a mere two weeks after moving in, she was getting intimate with his brother. I mean, what? Can somebody make sense of this, please? And like this mess wasn't messy enough. Caution was thrown out the window, too. I could open the door, and my brother, Mr. Gross, standing there butt naked. It was your What idea? did you do? I mean, honestly, because I didn't want to look like a punk to my brother, you know, I guess it was peer pressure. I just joined and then the he party because that's what that's what we do. And he joined in. That's what we do. But it was a test, though. But she it did, though. though. Like, okay, okay this is what I'm saying, though. Then. Your feelings were really hurt. You didn't I, want her to fail the it. test. Right. Now, this ought to be fun. Imagine untangling the mysteries of this window of conception when there are threesomes happening. Was it during Mr. Blackman's tryst, Mr. Gross's escapades, or perhaps even her previous relationship? Anything was possible. But check out the irony. The cousin's name was Gross. What are the odds, man? You throw the bait in at the, at the fish catch it. If it's a good fish, you keep it. But if it's not a good fish, you throw it back, you know? And then and what if it gets fried, like the both of you? Miss <laughs> Johnson, how many times were you intimate with Mr. Gross? Twice, both with Vincent's permission. Um, your Honor, that's Twice, twice. And Mr. Gross? Twice, no, Your Honor, we actually had six more than 10 times. No, it wasn't. It was twice. More than 10 times, you twice. say? Could not have summed it up better than the judge. Prepare to be even more dumbfounded. Don't say I didn't warn you. Apparently, these guys were trying for a baby, not the threesome way, the old fashioned way. But seriously, man, what? In two weeks, these guys were jumping ships like crazy. Imagine the mother's horror upon finding her daughter in such a predicament. It was Vincent, because we were actually trying to have a baby. I wasn't trying to have a baby with my ex. Wait a minute. How are you trying to have a baby with a woman and giving her permission to sleep with your brother? That was really just pillow talking on. You know, like, that's how. Okay, that, why don't you use the condom then? 
Why don't you use a condom then? So, Miss Johnson, you have a witness. Your mother, am I correct? Please stand, ma'am. She gonna, she gonna prove to you. State your name for the court. I'm uh, Rebecca Johnson, and... Well, the mother never wanted her daughter to be here, and yet here she was. Funny how that went. I don't think even the conception calendar would help the situation here. Still, it came up. It seemed the woman was good enough for these guys in bed, but not so much out of it. Double standards, much. Your brother. And when you, of course, look at the 15th, that's the date of the threesome. The threesome. Viviana's birth is on the 8th of June. So oh. as you look at this calendar, who do you believe Viviana's father is? I believe it's Mr. Blackman. Your Honor, I believe it's not now one of ours. If you have sex with two men, you had sex with four. You have sex with four, you had sex with That's eight. That's not true. You had sex with eight, you had sex with 16. So I don't know who it is. Bringing the curtain down on this gross case, I bet it was a delight for everyone watching. Ew! The jokes aside, the actions produced a baby whose fate hung in balance. Let's see what the future holds for her. The paternity of three-month-old Viviana Black and whether Mr. Blackman or Mr. Gross is the biological father. It has been determined that her father is Mr. Black. I told you, I told you, I told you so. I you all have had your fun and sown your oats. Ms. Morris was desperate to save her family. She was seeking the DNA test to prove the defendant. Mr. Byram was her baby daddy. He, on the other hand, was fed up with her antics. Yep, plural, infidelity, accusations, and a whole lot of relationship drama were on the docket. So better buckle up, people. Ms. Morris, you've petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that the defendant is the father of your one-month-old son, Jackson. Uh, you hope these results will save your family Family because you have two other kids together, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Byram, you say the plaintiff admitted to sleeping with another man, and when the results prove you are not Jackson's father, you plan to leave for good. Yes, I do. Let's peel back the layers of this relationship onion, shall we? Now, she admitted to cheating, but she left out the part where she slept with his friend. Oh, yeah, and quite conveniently so. It seems she got constantly accused, so she went right on and made it a reality, I guess. Not a good testimony, my friend. We just for this. Me and the dude she cheated on me with were hanging out the night before because we were we were we were really close friends. Oh, we stayed up all night, five, six o'clock in the morning. I wake up probably seven o'clock. He's already gone. She fought with me the night before so she can leave and stay at her grandma's house. I went over to her grandma's to, you know, cause she was over there with the kids. I seen him on the couch at first through the window. And then I, that's when I started banging on the doors and the windows. And then I go in the house, he's hiding up in the attic. So the trust was shattered, pretty hard to come back from that. And guess what? It was not just a one-time thing. Nope, they had it going on for quite a few months. Gross, man. And now the consequences were at the door, banging. I would go over there and get mine in the morning and we, she would have him at we night. Split up for we split up for a month and he was constantly blowing my phone up every day because we, we completely split up. He moved to his friends down the street and I was still in the house. Like I, I was the one that got to stay at the house with the other two children. And so you this this thing with the friend wasn't a one-time thing. No. They were in a relationship after I we moved We were out. in a relationship they got together. when me and him split up. So now the bun in the oven was baked and served. Who was the chef though? That still remained a mystery. And on top of that, the other guy was unavailable. But the guy's mother was very much in the baby's Life. And while he was gone, guess who was taking care of them? Father as well. Yes, Your Honor. She's, st she's still talking it, to his mom about it. No. Sending his mom pictures of the baby. And she's trying to tell me that it's my kid. His mother, the other guy's mother, said if it does turn out to be her son's, that she wanted to be in his life. Sent her pictures of the baby because she true. was asking me you just about, it last if, week. about how much he was. No, I did not. Yeah, you did. About how much he weighed and all that. So it's not an everyday thing. It, it only happened twice. Mr. Byram was present in that complex relationship, but the doubts kept sucking him back in paternity limbo. Yep, such was their power, and so he was waiting for the results to take him out of his misery. Not so fast, though. We are in a complicated relationship Yes, together. very complicated. Do you, you, you live together? Yes, ma'am. Accent differently? I... Don't, I, I do yes, a he little bit. Yes, he does. He um, shows my other two way more attention than he shows Do you blame him. me? He... So you do admit you're having a I, hard time bonding yeah, with yes. Jackson because you him, don't know. So I still buy him clothes and toys and do whatever for him. I keep my distance from him because I don't know if he's my son. Now the question was, why sleep with a close friend of all the people in the world? And frankly, the baby mama's testimony didn't seem too convincing. More like this action was done out of frustration. Bet she didn't know. She would land right in paternity 
Kennedy court, did she? They never do. He's he was not, always he, there because he was my friend. He was always over a lot, I'll admit that, but it's just, I, he's always treated me like crap, but he always belittles me. It's been going on for four years now, and it's just... Do you have feelings for this other guy? No, I don't. You I mean, if, yeah, he's the, do. if he's the father, I'm gonna let him be in his talk life. About him, you you tell know, him I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna keep a kid away from their father. I don't think any woman should do that. Well, this doubt was so crippling that Mr. Byram held himself back from fully embracing the poor baby. Understandable where he was coming from, but the poor little fella was innocent. He just got swept up in adult drama. Sometimes, but not really, no. Yeah, like, I do, but I don't at all. Like, I give him attention. I made him laugh for the first time in his life, everything else. But for the most part, I just leave him to her. I don't feed him his bottles. I don't change him. I don't do none of that. That's all her. So do the other children notice there's a difference? Uh, I'm not sure if they're, they might just be too little to really yeah, know that I'm they're two and three. So okay. I don't, yeah. Time to draw the curtain down on this one. It was one heck of a rider, packed with love and deceit and whatnot. But a very real baby's fate was on the line. So was their relationship. Let's see whether they have a future or not. Mr. Byron, you are the fox. Yes. Thank you. I'm happy about this. Congratulations. Thank you. That just that really helped me out a lot. That, that like. How does it feel now? Feels great. Almost want to cry that he's mine. Miss Cochran was on a mission. She wanted to prove to Mr. Birch that he was her guy. But wait, Mr. Birch played the good old paternity denial card, and that got Baby Mama furious with a capital F. Uh-oh. 2009, and his paternity denial makes you furious. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Birch, you claim that Miss Cochran and you never had a relationship and were only friends with benefits. Uh, you say that you were not having sex with her during the window of conception and are here to prove you are not the father, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Let's take a deeper look at this love, or should I say love-ish situation. Now, these two claim to be in a friends with benefits situation since 2009. Yeah, heard that right. Seven whole years of keeping it casual, folks. It was just a fling for the baby daddy, and it flung. Baby, why? Your Honor, he's denying my son because he doesn't want the responsibility of another child, nor does Mr. Birch want to pay child support. That's why I believe he's denying our child. Your Honor, we only had a, a friends with benefits since we first started and I made it clear to her I made it clear to her that's what I wanted from the beginning I understand that mr. Birch only wanted friends with benefits and I was fine with that and I understood that mr. Birch did not want any more children and I was fine with that time to dive headfirst into the baby drama the defendant was throwing shade at the idea of being a daddy again claiming that miss Cochran just wants him to foot the bills oh my and yet mommy insisted that he's the father and there were some doubts floating around like confetti at a wild party and what does confetti do it sticks no your honor that's that's not true what's the truth then according to you at the times we would have sex she was actually bringing the condoms to me so you were that, using protection no ma'am that is not true we did not start using protection until after i was pregnant i have to ask you this miss cochran why were you having unprotected sex with mr birch when you knew this was just a friends with benefit here comes the bombshell moment miss cochran drops the news that she's pregnant the big reveal and how does mr birch react well he claims she brought condoms in the early days but miss cochran insists they only started using protection after she got knocked up. It's a he said, she said situation with a side of unexpected parenthood. The yes. course of the year. The course of the year. I was about yes, to man. say. <laughs> no. So I if he's living with other women, how do you think that you're going to be in a relationship with him? Because it didn't start out like that, Your Honor. The women came after he relocated back to his hometown is when I got knowledge of the other women. Your Honor. Actually, what she would do is ride past my house every time. Not once he relocated. She would to see a city. car. She would see a car sitting in front of my house. Confusion was in the air as both parties tried to wrap their heads around this timeline. Well, it was a mess, and that led to the baby mama welling up. Guess the events caught up to her. Yep, they always do. Quit having other women over there, or just tell me about them. He had me under the impression that as long as I was loving him and giving him sex the way that he wanted, I had nothing to worry about, and I believed it. I'm a woman. I get it. Sometimes you just love someone and it doesn't turn out the way you want and i can see the tears in your eyes right now when you can barely even look at him because you still love him now he's my friend now hold on some more tea was about to be spilled miss cochran presented another calendar detailing her escapades yep thorough approach meanwhile a witness stepped up and she called mr birch's shenanigans right out seems everyone was in a league of their own making here on their outline uh on the 5th of october your honor that was my girlfriend's birthday from california and mr Mr. Birch had texted me wanting to 
see me. And I was on the other line with her and I said, my old man's texting me, I'm about to go see him. And she said, don't give in to him. You're being a mashed potato. So because I did go there and I had sex with Mr. Birch that night, I wrote on the calendar so that way my best friend and my mother would not know that I had went back to Mr. Birch and had sex with him again. So I wrote mashed potato. Well, would you look at that? Baby daddy was trying to paint the mama a villain and yet he ended up becoming one at the end himself. And Judge Lake saw right through him. The guy had some nerve to respond like that. Yes. His son's birth certificate at his own free will. Look, that is admirable. You Mr. already- Mr. Birch admitted to my friend that he knew he was the father once he seen you know, I at eight weeks old. He's a handsome young man, but if you, if you look at me, I'm midnight black. She's like 11.50 and he's like 8.59. Yes, ma'am. So- What? So, yeah. I, I mean, I'm talking about skin complexion. You feel like the child's skin color doesn't indicate that you Does could it match? be- Does it match? That's correct. Well, no matter who was in the bad here, baby Unia still deserved a father and her fate was sealed in the envelope. The only thing left was to reveal its contents, and that's what the judge did. Unai Crockett, it has been determined by this. You are not the father. Ms. Crocker, I apologize. And I accept your apology. I know there was a part of you that truly wanted this child to be his. Baby, you've been blind as a Betsy bug. See what I'm saying? That's a long time to supposedly Absolutely, not just be, Absolutely, that's a long you know, time, but that's why so we're here So your point now. is, how do I believe that well, when you already admit... told me when she admitted up to all this, she told me, yes, it's been going on the whole time. But I also, when I came clean... We did not use a condom. The bottom line is, within the window of conception, you slept with more than one man, and the sex oh, yeah. was unprotected. I'm sick of I'm hearing y'all argue back and forth about nothing. Um, the baby is his. Have you have been vindicated. Again, Miss Tillis, this is his child. What are you gonna do now? Mr. Harrison was at the podium suing the defendant. Yep, and on top of that, he wanted his name to be removed from the birth certificate after the results. Why? Because he was sure as heck he wasn't the defendant's baby daddy. Mr. Harrison, you are suing the defendant, Ms. Grant, for paternity fraud. You've also petitioned the court to remove your name from the acknowledgement of paternity document for four-year-old Aaliyah Harrison because you claim you signed it under false pretenses. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Grant, you claim you may have lied about your ongoing affair, but you did not lie about Mr. Harrison being your daughter's biological father. This baby daddy accused mama of paternity fraud, and he had his reasons. I bet he does. Now, according to him, he started suspecting the paternity through the rumor mill going around on Facebook. Yep, and apparently, the rumors were started by Ms. Grant's friends. Yeesh. I've done everything for her since the day she's been born. I've had several people come to me through Facebook and through text messaging on my phone saying that, you know, Aaliyah is not your, not your daughter. I don't care what, you know, Miss Grant is saying. She is not your, she is not your daughter. Are they so. explaining what they based this, this assertion on? Well, apparently it's, it's through several of her friends, you know, that They're maybe not she's any kind had. Of friends of mine, Your Honor. Those are some friends of the defendant. I mean, come on. Just to get payback from the baby mama, these guys went so low. And I believe they thought they were being good Samaritans telling baby daddy to go do some digging. To say that the person that gave me these, these accusations had no reason other than the fact that they had, you know, had an argument and she felt like she had to get a little bit of revenge on, on her, you know, and started telling me okay. things such as, but also said, you know, this child does not look anything like you. You need to start doing a little bit of investigation. Well, she's on your biracial, body. Your Honor. What is she supposed to look like? She looks like herself. Let's leave the digging to the judge, shall we? The plot was about to thicken. It turned out Ms. Grant was indeed cheating. Not cool. I mean, duh. But if we were to believe the word of Mr. Harrison, the cheating wasn't just one instance. Oh yeah, Your Honor. When he went snooping through, I, I my have phone. to. I have to say, she's had. She was had this affair with this person for 15 years. I've only been with her for eight. So this goes way before we were ever even together in the first place. So after eight years with her and a previous child before the one in question, we have already had a child together. So she's been cheating on me literally the entire eight year span that we were together, including the time. Now, who was this secretive friend of the baby's mama? Well, this friend was a good friend of Ms. Grant. Believe me, he seemed to be quite a generous dude who helped in all kinds of ways and then just poof, gone on his merry way. Hard to believe that? I had met this person when I was 18 years old. I was a single parent of a two-year-old daughter at the time. Um, he helped me with her. He helped me financially. He has bought cars. He has paid rent. He has paid bills, okay? Um, when I met Mr. Harrison and I told my friend, I'm in love and we're gonna have a baby. And he wished me the best. He said, I'm gonna bow out gracefully. I know you'd like to get married. And you know, that wasn't 
his intention for me. Oh man, there was a lot to unpack between these guys. It was pretty apparent they didn't trust each other at all. And why wouldn't they? When the last eight years of their life were at stake, Ms. Grant was holding her ground and even claimed she was given the choice to leave. And yet Mr. Harrison brought them here. When I came clean, I gave you the option whether or not you wanted to stay, whether or not you wanted to go ahead and call it quits for good forever. Yes, you're right. Or if you wanted to go ahead and, you know, lay it out all Because I'm not a line. deadbeat because and actually want to be around my children if they're mine. You How know? bad at times our relationship is, let's wait until the kids get older so that they can understand a little bit better than dad just leaving at four and seven years old. Enter the dude who started this whole paternity doubt ruckus. According to the defendant, she had been intimate with this fella when these guys were separated, and the separation was for quite some time. At this point, baby daddy interjected with a story, and soon they both were talking over each other. When were you last intimate with this other guy? Um, December. In December. Before um, Mr. Harrison and I decided to try and reconcile, um, we had been living apart for almost 10 months. Almost, almost 10 months. And so this is just months ago, two months ago. She, let me, let that me you really... say this. I had major ankle surgery uh, in February of 2014. Leave it to Judge Lake to ask the loaded questions. I mean, she was the boss, right? Upon asking whether Ms. Grant led the plaintiff on to believe he was the baby daddy, she claimed she was 100% positive he was her guy. Why so, sir? Apparently because of a blizzard. I did lie. <laughs> I admit to lying about being so how am I to know? with how somebody am I to know? else I mean, here and you know, there. How am I so do you also admit, Ms. Grant, to basically defrauding him, basically saying this is your child when you knew for certain that it was not his child? Did no, you do that? No, ma'am. I knew 100% that she was his child because she was conceived during a blizzard. What does snow on the ground have to do with a child's paternity? She was sure. He obviously wasn't. And that's where the cold hard facts come around to resolve all paternity doubts. However, before that, Ms. Grant seemed to go on a journey and poured her heart out to the man standing beside her. On the line, it's there's an entire family. Family. Five it's people, five family. people inside More the house right now people. are affected by what's going on. More than five people. And you... I have people right now telling me that I ought to be ashamed of myself for even being here to prove to this man who I am in love with at this very moment, even though he is accusing me of not knowing who the father of my child is, that I ought to be ashamed of myself for wanting to come in front of you and prove to him and the rest of the world that yes, I've done wrong. Nope. All of that gushy stuff had no effect on the plaintiff. Nada, he was still on the outs with this woman and had serious reservations. Would he reconcile with her if her claim turns out right? Most importantly, this friend of the defendants needed to stop butting in their business. After all the lies, I just don't think I could bring myself to reconcile again with her. Her friend that had hit me up She's on Facebook not any and texted, type of friend of she, mine. she apparently told her friend her that I was not her dad. So that's- Like, a, that's she knows she wasn't there with us. She, apparently you told her. No, I didn't, I she- I don't know. Okay. Your her father. friend told you that Miss Grant said that you're not the father. Yes. Well, the paternity fraud wasn't granted due to lack of evidence. No shock there. However, the paternity doubt was still very much there. Aaliyah was four years old, whose life was on the line, and she deserved a family. Let's take a look at what her fate had in store for her. Mr. Harrison, you are her father. I told you. I'm happy. How do you feel, Miss Grant? I feel vindicated, Your Honor. Absolutely. I may have lied about my affair, but I know who the father of my child is. I really I hope we can. I forgave I her for everything. Ms. Murray had another surprise waiting for her when she came back home from her deployment. Oh yeah, here she was glad to be home and to start a new chapter in their married life. And boom, the defendant accused her of infidelity. And now they are here. Today you say you stand before me outraged because your husband has accused you of infidelity while serving in Iraq. Furthermore, you claim he now doubts paternity of your child. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Murray, you argue that your wife did indeed cheat on you while serving overseas. You contend that there is no way you could be the father. Shedding light on the life of a military woman overseas who was also married, BTW, baby mommy had some things to share. Now that life is lonely and full of terrors, but some other distractions were there as well. There's gonna be temptations, and there's gonna be guys that look good, and there's gonna be guys all around, and you're gonna see guys, but that doesn't mean that you have to cheat and you have to go outside of your marriage. So you admit 
admit that there is temptation. There's temptation all around, but I, I didn't cheat and I didn't go outside of my marriage. And I know that in the military, there's a rule that we can't do that. All these issues started when Miss Brown got deployed. There she was fighting for her life, and here the husband dearest was wondering what kinds of fun she must be engaging in. Man, this dude had some serious insecurities. Going overseas, don't know if I'm going to ever see her again. And if I do see her again in one piece, is she still going to have love for me? It's a lot of man's own base, the younger man's. Keep in mind, I'm 22 years older than my wife. So that has a lot to do with it, uh, my being guilty or bad conscience. Because you feel like she may have wanted to be with someone younger. Apparently, the defendant wasn't always this doubtful of his wife. Hard to believe, right? This doubting fiasco began when a visitor from the apartment complex let him in on the secret of what actually takes place on the base. The military people either still active or not. And this young boy told me, he said, which really, really, this is when I really start, got worried. He said, in the military's world, when they overseas, they have a group of people and that group got to stay with each other. If they there for two years, this is the only group of people you're going to see for two years. This doubt had been bothering the husband a lot, clearly, as he did some research to understand the dynamics of the military. Along with that, he also came along with a witness who wanted to remain anonymous, mysterious, and wild. Mr. Murray wanted you to testify today as to the dynamics, the goings on in the military because of course as you know he has definite concerns as to whether or not his wife was faithful and whether or not her child is his biological child. Can you explain? Absolutely. Things have gotten interesting. Yep, Mr. Murray strongly suspected that Ms. Brown's special friend from the military had something going on with her. On top of that, Mommy was in constant contact with him as well, which certainly didn't help her cause. Is that who your husband thinks the father of your child really is? Yes, that's who he thinks that I had sex with. Wait a minute, let me back that up. When I picked her up in November, we was riding around in the car. I'm asking her, I thought it was kind of odd. Why is he calling you? Oh, just to make sure I'm doing okay. And this did not stop there. Not at all. It went on. And so did the infidelity doubt. It got more and more deeply rooted in his mind with each instance. It seemed Miss Brown was just inviting doubt at this point with no regard. When we got our next apartment, she's sitting on the couch. She had bought me some Jordans and I'm wearing my Jordans. She's talking to him. I heard her tell him, he's not stupid, <laughs> he's not stupid. And you know, well, she ain't talking to her mother like that. She ain't talking to her sister like, who are you talking to? And she said his name. And I said, and she, she said, um, the man called you. I said, well, who's he calling stupid? Up till now, the defendant had just been doubting the faithfulness of his wife. His wife made it back home alive. Thank goodness for that. And bam, immediately got pregnant. Now the age of the dear old husband, pun intended, didn't back up this scenario much. Furthermore, baby daddy couldn't help commenting on the little girl. Not cool, man. She doesn't too much look like me. My mother says she's bad like me when I was that age. <laughs> but I just, I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, for me having kids, and my kids look split image of me, and she doesn't. That equates to doubt. Well, I had doubt. Um, I had a man's discharge is unusual, and the doctor told me years ago that it, it has something to do with my sperm cells are weak. The only way to resolve this paternity doubt was through the DNA results. This all took a toll on their marriage. Mr. Murray was good with the little girl, but the doubt still plagued his mind. Let's put it to rest once and for all, shall we? Mr. Murray, that you are her father. Thank you. I think my need. Thank you. Within a three-day period, this plaintiff had been quite busy, the kind of busyness that now led her to seek help from the paternity court. The defendant seriously doubted the paternity of little baby Marley. Here we go. Miss Cook, you confess you had sexual relations with your husband, Mr. Edmund, and then cheated with another man. Yes, Your Honor. All within a three-day period. Yes, Your Honor. Now you say you're unsure which of the two fathered your daughter. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Cook had been married to Mr. Edmund for five months. Things were good for them in that period of time. However, not all was smooth sailing. As it turned out, they had some turbulence at the time of conception and ended up making some stupid decisions. But Facebook has a whole nother story to tell. All right, so what happened? Some stuff pops up, makes me feel very uncomfortable, and makes my trust for him go down quite what a lot. What pops up? A message from another girl 
This girl has popped up multiple times. Okay, so you suspected him of cheating. Oh dear, sleeping with his best friend. Now that was one way to take revenge. And this supposedly best friend doesn't sound like he had the defendant's best interests at heart. They ended up hooking up and guess where it happened? It wasn't even like sex, like in a room or in a hotel. It was like, it was outside at a church. What? And somebody else was there that I know. And that's how I found out. And he watched it. Yeah, Honor. well, it's weird because the other person was actually pretending to be asleep and secretly looking over his shoulder. In a nutshell, she cheated, he cheated, and then she cheated again. Wow. Hard to keep track of this toxic situation, right? Like, this wasn't messy enough. They did all of this without any protective measures. Yep, and the rest was history. I was with my husband at the time. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, we were together basically every day. We did not use protection. And the other, the, the second guy, which is embarrassing to admit, but we did not use a condom. The bottom line is, within the window of conception, you slept with more than one man. So Ms. Cook was now pregnant, and she chose a doctor's appointment to drop the bomb on the boyfriend's head that there could be more than one possible baby daddies out there. She dialed the other guy's number, and this was their conversation. Now, and just for the record, I love Jay, and we are going to be together, and he will love this baby regardless, which he also vouched for. He took the phone, he called the, he talked to the other man, and he said, even if you're the biological dad, I'm still the one making sandwiches, I'm still the one doing her hair, and you can come on the weekends. Enter the defendant's sister, his witness. Now she came charged and ready to take down the baby mama. Oh yeah! They weren't a fan of each other, but they were cool with each other initially. And then the sister saw her walking down the street, not alone. I would drive up and down the street, see her from her little organization or whatever, I would pick her up, we'll talk, you know. And then one day I was riding down the same street, and I seen her walking up and down the street with one of Jared's friends, with uh, the arm around the neck and all of that. Okay, all Your of Honor, that. Um, first of all, I all would, just, that, I would like that. to say something did happen with that friend, yes. Ms. Edmund wasn't done talking yet. Nope, she had a lot to share about the shenanigans of the plaintiff. Moreover, she was absolutely positive the baby wasn't his brother's. Why? Because of the baby's appearance. How can you be a woman and say, you know, oh, I admit to sleeping with your best friend, but this baby is a thousand percent yours? Like, what you mean? We live in a city where it's 90% Hispanic. You cannot look at that baby and tell me that you're a thousand percent sure that that baby is African American. Get I, out of I here. could. Get out of I here. would. Get out I of can. here. All right, so hold on. Drama, drama, and even more drama. These guys have forgotten that they were standing in a paternity court and not in a divorce court. Baby Marley's life was on the line, and all they could do was to get involved in nonsense bickering. It was like so supposed what? to be I my. Can't get pregnant, though. But you didn't use a condom, so I can't how get many other pregnant, girls though. have you gotten pregnant? You like four? Me. Who okay. Cares? I can't get I pregnant. I care. Though. We're married. Why? I care. Why? I care that Why my husband married? is But are we not here dealing with the paternity regarding Marley? Yes. Let's talk about that. See, the thing is, I know you all like to run your mouth and get off the subject, but you're not going to get me off the subject. Apparently, there were other issues in this relationship as well, and these issues extended to the baby daddy's family as well. According to the defendant's sister, it was a black and white issue. Heard that right? Well, color me curious, and let's hear it. She chooses to throw that up in my family's face and also my brother's face, you know? In what She'll way? tell him that, oh, I'll start screaming and they'll call the police on you and you better not touch my car door. It's been many a time when my brother has called my family members asking them for a ride because Megan done left him stranded somewhere. All of that. I'm leaving and when you try to pull me out of the car and you try to threaten to break my car, you, take out the battery, me... break the windows. Oh Lord, they shouldn't have gone that far. Or better yet, baby mama shouldn't have gone that low. That was just insane. Saying that to the man you claim to love and had the nerve to justify that you weren't racist. Shocking. In a relationship, a marriage with a black man because you claim to love him. Yeah. How possibly have birthed a biracial child with a black father, and then in an argument, dare to bring up his skin color and race. No, what I did say is Yeah, you clarify. See, I did say, okay, I was like, so if the cops come here and they see you and they see these marks on my arms. Ms. Cook also brought a witness along. Her grandma. Apparently, baby mama recently came into some money through a settlement, and she suspected Mr. Edmund was after that. But that clearly had nothing to do with the matter of paternity on hand. Granny was sure the defendant was the baby daddy. He doesn't really have any 
anything to do with paternity, but I mean, if, they're, if they stay together, it would, ma it would make a difference in their life. If, if he's just there with them, just for the money, I just don't know. Do you have any type of assumption as to who you think uh, beautiful Marley's father is? I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that it's Jay's baby. And why don't you have any doubt? Because just what that the mean? way they There are. you go with this cheering. This drama has gone on for way too long now. Baby mama was in her own head and not appearing so mature. Baby daddy was doubtful. No idea which way this whole fiasco was gonna go. But the results were in. Mr. Edmund, you are her father. <laughs> Happy about that and like, I love my wife, I love the baby. Good. I love my sister, I just don't want people fighting, you know? I hope it brings people that much cordial or to get that much closer to be in the same room at least. The second time's a charm. The plaintiff was back in court to prove to Mr. Jalik he was her baby daddy. However, the defendant had a lot of doubts regarding the paternity of baby Joni and wanted to put an end to this here and now. Ms. Tillis, you are back in my courtroom today for a second time. Yes, ma'am. Now you say Mr. Jalik is denying your sixth month old daughter, Jayani, because he is confused and delusional. But you have no doubt, you say, that he is the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Well, these guys had issues, obviously, but they were still living together, cohabitation and co-parenting. The husband whipped out the conception calendar, and it was highly detailed, I may say. These very details led him to doubt the loyalty of his wife and the paternity of Gioni. She was not born a preemie. She was full healthy on April the 1st. So when I did my calculation, I'm like, wait a minute. If if I was out of town during the end of June coming into July, and she was born healthy on April the 1st, the time frame don't add up. That means you, you was already pregnant. Back. Yes, ma'am. That would have put her, her window conception up here around the time I, was, I wasn't even in the city. Next up, the defendant presents another shocking testimony. Apparently, Mr. Jalik got hold of the mommy's phone through their eldest kid. Interesting. The guy went straight to her gallery, and ding, 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 there was a surprise just waiting for him there. He had her phone that's open. I directly went to her gallery. In Ms. Tillis's photos, you have a picture of a month old fresh newborn, which is right here, and one of her ex-boyfriends cropped together in her phone. The baby ain't even 60 days old yet. Why is you cropping a picture of my daughter with your ex? Uh, that's a great question. And I told him, I was on the phone with my sister, you know, like, I could say, oh, you look Don't like... Don't none of that make sense. Baby Daddy had expressed his doubts, pretty clearly, and more than on one occasion. And yet, Baby Mommy kept on having fun with the guy. Moving on, Baby Daddy revealed another rather interesting piece of information that further led him to doubt the paternity. Why do that with her? Why why say little stuff? If you feel like she's because not I'm yours, still why grown, do all this Because I'm still stuff? a grown man, right. this is, this, this is, we know for a fact, She's Jadis' sister. Well, we trying to figure out if I'm Jayani's father. So whatever I do with Jadis, I'm gonna do for Jayani. So she don't feel nothing but unconditional love for me. I'm a, I'm a boy maker, period, point blank. Mr. Jalik was pretty adamant he only had the ability to make boys. And when baby Gioni came into their lives, it appeared downright impossible for him to have fathered her. Now, why was he so certain about that? That is the question. So you have four boys. Yes, ma'am. And you believe you only make boys. That's all I got. So do you have any other evidence to support the fact that you just make boys? I was told a long, 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 long time ago by a family member right. that that's all I was going to ever make because that's all I was producing. And I believe it wholeheartedly. So the fact that here come out of nowhere, a curveball, which is a beautiful blessing right here. Now with the help of a doctor, Judge Lake established that a guy being just a boy maker is just a myth and nothing else. But that didn't let down Mr. Jalik. Nope, he went on to say that was indeed possible. And apparently it was a Southern thing. What was happening in the South, man? Pickle juice is a natural remedy as well. A natural remedy for what? Just keeping yourself tight and right. But what does that have to do with producing boys? See, I can't, I, I can't go, it's a Southern thing that we was taught way, way, way back. Way, way back. I got time, what is it? If you combine pickle juice, prune juice, and lemon juice, you produce more boys? Yes, ma'am. Those three juices. I've been running down through there, y'all. I ain't got nothing but boys. All this craziness aside, there was a real baby whose fate and life were at stake. Time to put this doubt to rest and see whether there will be a third time here for these guys. Oh, I hope the southern things of Mr. Jalik turns out to be a total bust. Mr. Jalik, you are the father. You got your first little girl. <laughs> you must have, have to drank a different smoothie that day. You have to switch up your juice. Yeah, so I'm uh, mm -hmm. proud, you know, like I said, I'm human. 
world where doubts and secrets are looming large left and right? Let's delve into the riveting case of a mother, a potential father, and a child with a mysterious medical condition. All the right ingredients for a paternity mess? The baby mama was ready to prove to the daddy, once and for all, that he was her guy. Let's see how he takes that. Miss Clary, you are petitioning the court for a paternity test to prove to the defendant that he is the father of your son, Gage, who has multiple medical needs. You say Mr. Asinato owes you $15,000 in child support, and you demand he pays you what he owes. Yes, Your Honor. As the story unfolds, we get to witness the defendant's side of the tale. He had been slapped with a $15,000 child support bill for a kid he swears isn't his. She had him sign that birth certificate, but he's crying foul. Betrayed and hurt, he's got some serious doubts about this pregnancy and a colossal mountain of resentment to go along with it. So, Mr. Asinato, I have to ask you, you owe $15,000 in Honor, child support? No way that I owe $15,000 on a child that's not he mine. He signed the birth certificate. She's basically roped me into signing a birth certificate for a child that she told me that was mine and has taken me to court for child support. I've paid almost $15,000 in child support. So two married individuals decided to hang out, shoot some pool, and watch a few movies. Sounds innocent enough, right? If only enough that was the case. Because when a pass was made, the dynamics shifted from friends to lovers pretty quickly. And there you have it, a classic messy love affair. Fast forward to the pregnancy bombshell. She's pregnant and he's in shock. He claims she led him to believe the child was his, but the truth is far from clear. I you thought you were exclusively together, girlfriend, boyfriend, no, committed. No, ma'am, she was married at the time. Your Honor, oh. when we first met, we both were married. When we both met, we were separated. I wasn't with my husband for a year and a half whenever I got Your to Honor, see that's my not son. True. Take me back. Wait, I I let, let me understand this relationship. When you met, you both were married. I was separated from my wife and I moved into a townhouse. The timeline gets murkier as they reveal they weren't living together when the child was conceived. People, arguments over whether she was seeing someone else further added to the confusion. It's a classic case of he said, she said, nothing new in the paternity court. It was a regular feature. So you all were together. living next door to one another for four years? No, ma'am. That's oh, when we first met. We lived together on and off over the last eight years. When my son was born, we were living together. She was yes, not living with me. I, yes, I was. And I was she also got pregnant. She moved in with me when she got pregnant because I wanted to do the right thing. Well, she, she said that when her yes. son was born, she was living with you. That was right. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. That is correct. Hold on to your seats, people. We're diving headfirst into the hospital drama of Baby Gage's birth. Mr. Asinato, the potential father, claims he wanted to do the right thing when he found out about the pregnancy. But was it all smooth sailing towards family bliss? Nope. And the child support battle is on. Unfair. I want to get to the birth. Yes, he was you the say hospital. after she found out she was pregnant, you wanted to do the right thing. I did. You had her move in. Yes, ma'am. When Gage was born, you were living together. Yes, ma'am. So you in my house. Were, did you go to doctor's appointments? Did you no, support he did her not, through your this? Honor. Did you go to the hospital when Gage he was, was born? I did. He was at the hospital when the baby was born. Hold the phone, people. Things were about to heat up in this custody clash when Ms. Clary asked for help with diapers. Well, Mr. Asinato responded with a not-so-charming remark, and so the child support saga began. But here's where it gets twisty. Doubts crept in as Baby Gage faced medical challenges. He told me, I told him my son needed diapers. He's like, you're such a whore. Go work the street corner for diapers. So I turned around and went and filed child support. That's when he started denying my son. When did your doubts set in and why? Gage had a lot of medical problems when he was a baby. He had colic, he had ear infections, he had multiple, multiple problems. Buckle up for a cultural roller coaster, folks. The question of Baby Gage's parentage had taken a scenic route through different backgrounds. The courtroom dove headfirst into the cultures and lineages, all about the paternity of the baby. Wait for a second. Was the Mediterranean the magical word that unlocks this paternity puzzle? We shall see about that. Mr. Asinata, you're not African American. I am not. You're not of Asian origin. I am not. But are you of Mediterranean descent? I'm going to tell you. I don't know. Which is that. I Mediterranean. So. Right. so the answer would be yes. Yes, ma'am. So and this Irish. is one of the main issues that you feel like you don't understand why he's denying exactly. that Gage could potentially because, be his. Exactly. Well, this drama wasn't going away anytime soon, and these guys were just going around in circles. But baby Gage needed real answers, and Judge Lake had them all ready for him. Let's roll them out then. Mr. Asinato, you are not his father. I did not sleep with anyone else. I slept with somebody two months prior. Miss Clary, you had me convinced. 
Your Honor, it was two months before. Mr. Smith brought the defendant to court to prove he was her baby daddy. Yep, in a twist of events. A guy was here singing the baby daddy tune, but the mommy wasn't having any of it. Ms. Jones was ready to prove otherwise, and we were here for it. Mr. Smith, you are here contesting paternity of your ex-girlfriend's three-year-old daughter, Janaya. You claim Ms. Jones is sex craze and had intercourse with multiple men during the time of conception. And you intend to prove you are not her child's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jones, you say Mr. Smith is nothing but a deadbeat who will grasp onto any excuse to get out of being a daddy to your daughter. Picture this. Mr. Smith and Ms. Jones, the dynamic duo turned romantic. That is, if you can call it that. Best friends turned friends with benefits pretty soon and eventually crossed the line into the unknown. Dumb, 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 da. Say it theatrically. It's a classic tale of modern romance, folks. What was your relationship like? We were best friends at first. And and then we start having sex. Wait, hold on. We became best friends the day we had sex. What? Explain. Uh, Your Honor, we met at a party, went home with her, had sex with her. Then after that, we hooked up a couple more times. We was friends with benefits. Oh, so you're saying the sex happened immediately? Yes. yes. Oh, so you met at a party, had sex that night? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that's not best friends, that's a booty call. But wait a moment. The air was filled with betrayal. The defendant was questioning everything. Baby mama accused of being a sex addict with a penchant for fibbing. The doubts about the baby's parentage are as thick as the plot in a daytime soap opera. Did you have a boyfriend, Ms. No. Jones? So you didn't have a boyfriend when you met him? No. Were you having sex with anybody else? Yes. Oh, you were? This yes. around the same time of conception. No. Your Honor. around the same time. I was having... So boyfriend or no boyfriend, I mean, sex is what makes babies. So if you were yeah. having sex with somebody else during the window of time, you were uh, having sex with Mr. Smith, how do you I was having the other sex, guy out? I was having sex with this man in July. Well, I got well, into a relationship it's, 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 uh, with him in August. Now picture a timeline so baffling, it would give Doc Brown from Back to the Future a headache. Yep, sleeping with multiple men, having the time of her life, overlapping relationships, and boom, a foggy conception window. The boyfriend she was with when you met her, but another guy. Yes, Your Honor. Was there another guy, Ms. Jones? Um, that's the one that I'm talking about in July, that I had sex with in July. All right, so you say that you're saying the timeline, though, is off because you had sex with him in July but, and you believe you conceived at the end of August. Yeah, I was. So, I got in a relationship with so him. So was that an ongoing sexual relationship with this guy? That was just the one I stand. I always wanted to have sex with him. Let's roll out the drama-filled exhibits. Folks, we've got desperate cries, birth certificates drenched in anguish, and witness who've seen it all unfold. This was one wild ride, but now we were all buckled in. So let's see it to the end. A collage came out. A collage? With, yes, with me, the baby, and this guy from the motel. And you submitted that to the court? This yes, collage. How did you find this collage? Uh, this collage was in a group chat with her and her friend, her best friend. So when it came to me, her best friend admitted to me like, oh, no, I didn't make that. Jarnation made it. Mr. Smith was feeling skeptical. And who can blame him? Imagine this. A baby's on the way. Doubts were high in the air. And when you throw a motel guy into the mix, a recipe for disaster. Yep, you heard it right. A motel guy. And that revelation certainly didn't sit too well with the baby daddy. I got two other kids, so I just wanted to be there. Had the pregnancy, you know, symptoms of going to the doctors and everything, because I never had that. But at the same time, I'm respectable. You having sex with all these guys during conception. So it might not could be mine. So when the baby come, when the baby come, we at the hospital, her family members come up there and her friends come up there. So while we up there, this motel guy have a baby a day later. Well, people, it was a changing diaper showdown. Baby daddy was here to show that he was the man, the myth, and the diaper changing legend. All hands on deck, daddy, if you will. He's taking his fatherly duties seriously. And to top it all off, he brought a sweet pick too to back up the claim. You not even her father, yeah, bro. She trying to take my job, <laughs> little and kid. At, at, at this, at this time, like, when we had the baby, I had to teach John Nation how to change a diaper. I was young. All of that, how to change a diaper. Young. I'm doing everything. I'm filling out paperwork, things that a father don't even do most of these days. Drum roll, please. The moment of truth had arrived, but we're not spilling the beans just yet. The paternity results are in, and they will leave you hanging on the edge of your seat, the cliffhanger of the century. Here we go. Mr. Smith, you are the father. <laughs> that is your beautiful little girl. Thank you, Your Honor. How does that feel to hear? 
That felt good. I kept telling you. That felt good, because I could, I could start a relationship with her and my other kids. I see the tears in your eyes, because I know it matters to you. Yes, Your Honor. Hold on to your seats, folks, because the baby mama brought the defendant to court after years of heartache and betrayal. His mind had been plagued by years of paternity uncertainty. Mom was sure. Let's get to the bottom of that, shall we? Mr. Hamilton, you have petitioned the court for a lie detector test on Ms. Lombardi, as well as DNA testing regarding her baby daughter. Yes, Your Honor. You say it is your belief that the defendant was unfaithful to you around the time of conception. Yes, Your Honor. Picture this, a love story filled with trust issues, jealousy, and a dash of betrayal. Mr. Hamilton and Ms. Lombardi have been together for over a decade, but their relationship had been anything but smooth. It's like a daytime soap opera with plot twists around every corner. But Ms. Lombardi's cheating, simply jealousy? No, Your Honor, it's actually history and reality. Like you just stated, I had to get our other three tested behind our back after that she admitted to cheating uh, with the first one. So the other two, you know, it was like, wow, they go to the question right there. Enter the doubts and reservations. And let me tell you, they were as deep as the Grand Canyon. Baby daddy suspected Ms. Lombardi of being unfaithful during the conception of their child. Unshocking, the trust crumbled and the wounds were raw. Ouch. Look at yeah, my exactly. baby. And she darkened it every last kid. She you looks know. just like you. With you a bald know head no. and she was a premium. It, this is Come tearing on, my family you apart, Your Honor. Hey, Your this Honor, is uh, tearing my uh, family uh, apart. I fly from uh, uh, Seattle. Mm -hmm. I'm driving home. I see one of my, and this is around the time of conception here. Now here's the kicker. The baby had doubts and a ton of it. He goes into quite some detail about where that doubt came from. And that incident turned pretty graphic. Apparently baby mama ruined a present from him and not in a good way. Uh oh. He won't, we, he won't even sleep Man, in the same bed with me. This is what I tell you. He won't sleep in the same bed. We nope. don't hardly communicate. Mm -mm. Nothing. You, nothing wait, because you still, of this. Because you still he live in the same house, but you won't yes. sleep in the same bed Absolutely with him. not. Because of this Be DNA yes. issue. I sleep on the couch. Mr. Hamilton. Yes ma'am. You're here to prove that a paternity test is necessary. Yes, Your Honor. Well, here we are in the courtroom, where things were juicier than a reality TV show. Ms. Lombardi's dropping truth bombs left and right. She's waving around Janae's birth certificate like a championship trophy, while the baby daddy starts dissecting the baby's features, color, skin, and everything in between. The drama's so thick, you could cut it with a plastic spork. Sign Janae's, but yet he's denying her. Like a fool, Your Honor. Tell and you know me. What? I didn't sign Can, Jerome, could you please hand this to Ms. Uh, okay, you run in court now, too? No. Okay, but, Jerome, yes, hand that to me. Please, I want you to see that he's... Well, folks, it's confession time in the courtroom. Ms. Lombardi finally spilled the beans, admitting she cheated with Mr. Hamilton's friend not once, but twice. Cue the dramatic gasps from the audience. Now, they're all wondering if this friend might be the real deal when it comes to baby Janae's paternity. Popcorn, anyone? Before you read the results, I would like to say something to Mr. Hamilton. May well, I? Well, this would be the time. Yes, you were right. About what? I cheated with your what, friend. What? Uh, you really did that, man? Yes, twice. The night I came on this Yes, I really did. Man. Yes, I cheated, Your Honor. And it's his baby it's, right here. It is a possibility. Well, 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 folks. The truth has been spilled in court, and it's not a pretty picture. Mr. Hamilton has quite the confession to make. He admitted to a polygraph examiner that he'd been more than a little busy with someone other than Ms. Lombardi between 2002 and 2014. Oh, snap. The lie detector confirmed it. How many times, you ask? Well, he's singing a tune about eight 18 times, and the audience's collective gasp says it all. Trust issues and drama abound in this courtroom showdown. Stay tuned for the results. You were asked the following question. Have you had sexual contact with anyone else other than the woman you disclosed to Miss Lombardi from July 2002 to August 2014? <laughs> Absolutely. You admitted to the polygraph really? examiner that you did indeed have sexual contact with someone really? other than the woman <laughs> you disclosed to Ms. Lombardi. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the results. But hold your horses. We're not revealing who the father is just yet. The suspense is killing us too. Mr. Hamilton. Yes, ma'am. You are her father. Oh my God, I knew it! I told you! I, I got you, and I'm sorry. I apologize. I deeply apologize. Okay. And I'll make it up to her too, man. I I'm knew sorry. it, I knew it. The father she believed was her biological father was now singing a different tune. The suspense builds up as the question of paternity and a hefty will take center stage. Here we go! Ms. Booker, you say your childhood was full of bullying and pain. Now the only man you have ever known as your dad is denying paternity. You and your mother opened your case to prove to the defendant that he is your father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Let's rewind the tape a little. Now Mr. Booker and Ms. Gant were once an 
item. Things were going well, and then bam, a mysterious man sneaking out of their apartment. Uh-oh, now there was doubt, and the baby ma'am fueled that doubt even more. Your Honor, I raised Lorraine and my other daughter, Rashida, mainly by myself the last part of their lives. Miss Gann was nowhere in the picture. Now, as far as the will is concerned, yes, if Lorraine is not my biological daughter, she's got to come out of my will to make room for my two daughters who are my valid. Next up, Ms. Gant added fuel to the fire, and in the heat of the moment, and ended up saying something that was icing on the doubt cake. Now, baby mama felt like the odd one out, even with the baby daddy providing for her. That was indeed a pickle. The following month, Ms. Gant became pregnant. Ms. Gant had that baby. Now, the thought that Lorraine and my badge like a towel was still in the back of my mind, but I'm still gonna be there. You know, we in this relationship together, I'm still gonna be a father and still there, and I was. Later on in the relationship, after Lorraine was born, three months or so in the relationship, you know, we, we got a little drunk one night, we had a little argument. Ms. Gant told me out of her own mouth with viciousness, Lorraine ain't your daughter anyway. You know, she told me this. Time to talk about the infamous pregnancy. Ms. Lorraine was a teenager when she revealed her pregnancy to Mr. Booker. Despite the uncertainty, he continued to provide for the family. And yet family jokes and rivalries added to the confusion further as the favorite kid was revealed. This is the only person I knew to be my father. He took care of you like a father? He, he told me that my other sister Rashida was his favorite, but he treated me different from the other kid. Made her feel like she was harsh manure. Uh, Always. Oh, get out of here. I didn't I treat her different. I raised Lorraine. I kept the roof over Lorraine's head. I raised kept food in Lorraine's belly. I kept Lorraine. clothes on her back. Now, the baby mama was sure she had remained faithful, and yet baby daddy didn't fall for it. Meanwhile, the favorite kid made the life of the plaintiff as difficult as possible. Who knew siblings playing the game of dozens would end up traumatizing a kid? Oh, my God. The she wasn't the favorite. There was something about her connection to you that didn't match her sister's connection to you. And my siblings knew, Your Honor. When me and my sister would get into it, she would tell me. She would be like, um, that's why daddy don't think you his daughter. Oh. Now, if that did go down, I didn't, know, I didn't know that, you know. Now, let's dive into the big BMW fiasco. Yep, you heard that right. According to the will, the BMW had the other sister's name on it. And yet, according to Ms. Lorraine, daddy dearest had made other promises to her. Could it get any more messy? Here's what Lorraine did. I, you know, I'm having health issues. I got sick. I came out of the hospital one time. Only her. Daddy, who's getting a BMW when you die? You know, and I'm like... That's Rashida stuff. That was you. That was you. Did and you I'm, say that, Miss Booker? Like, <laughs> yes, ma'am, I did. Only because Rashida was saying that um, Daddy was giving her everything, but he told my son that he was going to give it to him because I named my son after him. And the moment of truth finally arrived. Emotions ran high. A lot was at stake here. The years of doubts and reservations were finally going to be put to rest, or the drama might take a new turn. Let's see which way it goes. Mr. Booker, you are the father. I'm telling you! I'm telling you! I love you. Oh, no. Come here to me. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Oh, really? Thank you, plaintiff brought the baby mama to court after she ended up tilting his world right off its axis. In the electrifying world of paternity disputes, we have Mr. Lloyd and Ms. Rayleigh, all ready to fight out this paternity battle. Mr. Lloyd, you are in court today to prove that you are the biological father of the defendant's one-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Courtney Marie Grant. You claim the defendant led you to believe that you were the father only to have a bomb dropped on you that another man was her dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Rayleigh, you say you are 100% sure that Mr. Lloyd is not Courtney's biological father. A love triangle that would even make our dear Shakespeare blush. Baby mommy, the mastermind it seemed, was phenomenal at juggling. Her objects of choice were, though, rather peculiar. And so the drama begins. Let's start from the beginning. I want to understand the nature of this relationship. So you, you were in a relationship with somebody else when you met Mr. Lloyd, or were you in a relationship with Mr. Lloyd and met somebody else? I had just recently got out of a relationship when I had met Mr. Lloyd. Uh, of course, I was ending my last relationship with Ms. with the other party. Ah, the doubts and reservations. The beautiful aspect of every relationship. Dear God, so the defendant dropped the bomb on the baby daddy, claiming he might not be the dad. Ouch, that sure must have hurt. Her alibi, though. The Super Bowl. And so the guessing game began. Do you remember this dinner meeting, Miss Rayleigh? Yes, yes, Your Honor. And you all cleared the air and told Mr. Lloyd, there's no doubt you are the father. Yes, Your Honor. So why is it all of a sudden, three months, two months before the baby's born, you tell him he's not the father? Well, Your Honor, I was nine weeks pregnant when I found that I was pregnant. That's when the doubting and everything started. 
I said, well, nine weeks ago, I wasn't with Mr. Lloyd. So how did the baby mama end up pregnant? It's like a reality TV plotline. Baby daddy's excitement, though, soon turned to confusion. With capital C, after the big revelation, he left, but still the defendant had someone at the hospital with her. And don't forget the baby name crisis as well. That was interesting and one for the ages. He didn't need to be there if he's not the dad. So that's why Mr. Grimes... But what the, the, the dots I'm trying to connect are, when you told him he was the father, he accepted he was the father, but you say that this window between Mr. Grimes and Mr. Lloyd is only a span of two to three weeks anyway, right? Three weeks. Three weeks. Or four. Yeah, three to four weeks. The window of conception becomes a blurry mess. No surprise there. Was it Mr. Lloyd or Mr. Grimes? Nobody knew for sure. And so the baby daddies took the matter into their own hands. And like a suspenseful movie full of twists, they did a sting operation. I was like, okay, so both of them asked me in the car together. They in the car together. I'm with another friend. Who's the daddy, Chantel? So I said, okay, Curtis, you're the sperm donor, and Mr. Lloyd is the one who will be there for her. You know, and I, that, at the time, that's what the situation So wait was. a minute, the two potential fathers get together, you all get together. Yeah, just correct. And decide y'all gonna do a sting operation. <laughs> the drama escalated as the other baby daddy, Mr. Grimes, shared his version of the events. Desperation was the name of the game here, people, and the tension, so thick. Now the second baby daddy had doubts as well. Apparently, the baby looked like both of them. Oh yeah. One minute Corey the daddy, next minute I'm the daddy. Corey about to spend some money on the baby, he the daddy. Like, we both still seeing her to this day, you know? So... You both still seeing her? We both still seeing Courtney. I mean, he he go, he go been to Memphis more than me. I've been to Memphis one time, he been down there three, four times. <laughs> but Shantia not telling me that. So, neither of the baby daddies was supporting baby Courtney. Did you find that surprising? Because I sure didn't. However, the plaintiff was ready to support the baby. On the other hand, you would be surely surprised to know how many kids Mr. Grimes was supporting at the mere age of 23. Dear God, in the heat of the moment, baby mama ended up saying something ignorant. Yikes! Have you helped with this child? Yes, Your Honor. You have. Mr. Grimes, she has your last name, have you been helping to support Courtney since she's been born? Man, I'm gonna tell you like I told Shantia. I told Shantia when Corey, Mr. Lloyd, get out of her life, I told her, give me blood, I give her baby love, basically. I'm tired of her playing both sides. I got six other kids that I gotta worry about. She's not finna keep playing with this kid. Eight. If Courtney minds, Courtney makes seven. These guys were just playing the age-old blame game. Ms. Riley broke down and poured her heart out. Yes, girl, let it all out in the court. And while she did that, Mr. Grimes had the nerve to interject. Come Come on, man. He's not the father. I never told him that he wasn't the father. To hear him say this in court today, he would never, ever speak to me again unless it's about our children. And that's it. It's no more going back and forth because I have been going back and forth with these two for too long. And it's time for it to end. Either I'm going to be one of them or neither one of them. And I want it to come out today because I'm done with it. The moment we've all been waiting for. These guys were on the edge of their seats. All eyes were on the envelope. Is it Mr. Lloyd or Mr. Grimes? We are about to find out. Let's take a look at what destiny planned for the baby. Grimes, or Mr. Lloyd, is the father of one-year-old Courtney Rayleigh Grimes. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Lloyd. For y'all, congratulations. But you're done. I knew it from the start, you're done, bro. Calm down, because the truth is, it's not done.